Hi there. So I am going to build myself a candy cane forest. Uh, it's similar to David Peace's pea stakes, but instead of just being a straight stick, it's going to be a candy cane. So here's one I've wired up. Uh, 14 lights are in it. Uh, there's a spot on the bottom for a tent stake. Just slide that in and pound it in the ground. Uh, the bottom was designed for another Christmas light enthusiast. I'll share a link to his uh, his page uh, here later in the video. And the top is my design to interface with his bottom piece. All right, and so here's a clean one here, printed out. They get um, super glued together, tongue and groove design. So let's walk through how, I, uh, how I'm building my candy cane forest. So I started my uh, journey for a uh, candy cane forest here of uh, seeing David Peace's pea stakes and then seeing Frank Rostein's uh, model that he posted here on uh, one of the Facebook groups on uh, 3D printing for Christmas props and he posted this stake here I really like the design you got this uh, use a stake here a pit tent stake to put it in the ground and the bottom piece was really solid but I want to turn that into a candy cane so uh, I downloaded this. It's got a link to the Thingiverse right here. And when you click on that, it'll take it to and you download the, download the STL file so you can uh, print it on a 3D printer. So once I print out Frank's design, I designed this top for Infusion 360. For it, what I did is I, I printed out the actual bottom here and took my calipers and measured it and made my own uh, made my own part so you can see here how it's got the, the tongue portion tongue and groove and the model has got these little nubbies here inside it just like Frank's so I could push the pixels in and they would stay in place all right so once I uh, finished the model uh, the bottom parts are from Frank the top is from me I put it in my slicer uh, for my, my printer. This is a bamboo P1P. I set my wall loops at eight, uh, top shell at eight, bottom shell at eight. So I made it relatively thick. Um, one of the strengths to survive, I'm printing in PETG um, and 25% infill. And so that, and once I slice it uh, with my printer, it's kind of hard to probably see on the screen. It takes eight hours to print three of these, and that's actually relatively quick. And I put some, uh, you see in the bottom right here, I have some ports for the, the tongue portion. And uh, just a standard support structure. All right, with that, I send it to my printer, and I let it print out. So here are my candy canes being printed on my bamboo P1P printer. I've been really happy with this printer. It's uh, quite speedy and it still gets a good quality. All right, print three of them at a time. And I've been doing them in red and white. I'm going to do 120, maybe more of these candy canes. Here are three of the candy canes printed out, uh, ready for assembling. And I'll be using super glue for that. All right, so here are the two pieces for one of the candy canes. And you can see here, a closer look, there is a, uh, a tongue on the top portion and then there's a groove on the bottom. You might be able to see there's a little bit of stringing on the inside of the, uh, of the bottom piece. And what I'll do is I'll just grab a pair of pliers and pull out any of the residual um, plastic there. It doesn't need to be perfectly clean. <clears throat> then I take some CA glue or or super glue take it off this is a medium thickness one that I got off of Amazon I'm going to put it on the top and on the bottom all right and now I have an accelerator and I just spray a little bit inside the groove so it'll, it'll, it will uh, cure quickly and just push it together and hold it and that'll be about it. That'll hold it well, and I'll just set it aside. And I'll do that again for the other two that I have printed right now.
So each of the candy canes has 14 pixels in it. So that's kind of an odd size. So what I do is I just take a, a, a string of 100 and I cut 14 a piece. It leaves me with uh, two left over at the end. And I need some pigtails to connect each of them up, the male and the female end. I got these from Wally White, Wally's Lights. They're seven inches long each. Um, and that'll actually give me about a foot space in between each one of them. So that actually be perfect for what the effect I'm looking for. So the next step here will be for me to cut a, a string of 14 and then solder on the male and female ends and then put it into a candy cane. So I've cut myself a string of 14 pixels. Um, we got to identify the end versus the outputs. This right here, this end right here is an input. So I'm going to take this male end and connect it to that. Um, these pigtails come with a little stub of wire there and it's a little solder on it, which I really like. It makes it easier. I like using the solder sleeves. So I'm just going to strip off just a little bit more to make a little bit more wire to get inside and be contacted with the solder when I solder it to the pixels. All right, so I have these solder sleeves. I'm going to take three of them. And I have pre-cut the, the pixels here, and then I put it on and slide it over all three wires. And so now I got that there. It comes through quite a bit, enough. Now I'm going to double check where my ground is. There's my ground. It's also with a white stripe on it. You got a white stripe on the male connector here. And I'm going to slide that in here. And then I'm going to do the middle one. The solder in actually makes it sometimes less chance for it fraying. So I always, always like to do that one last. Okay. So I got it in position. Now I just use simple crescent wrenches to hold it in place on my piece of wood here. And I'm going to slide the solder portion of the sleeve right over the exposed wires take another crescent wrench and hold that in position all right double check the lineup it's all good have my heat gun i'm gonna zap it now you just keep doing this you watch it closely it'll melt the sleeve seal it up and then you watch for the solder to start the flow it doesn't take it too long if you do it too long you might melt the wire and get a poor connection there we go it's flowed there we go the solder flute is uh in good position so now i'm just going to wait for a second um and let it cool off all right now that the connectors have uh cooled i'm going to test it to make sure that i have a good good solder joint so i'll plug that in i have one of my differential receiver boxes here this is an experience light one and there we go all 14 of the lights are lighting up now i'm going to take another string here that i've already made i'm going to double check that the output is working as well line that up there we go both sides excellent this one is ready to be added to a candy cane all right so i've decided to have this little shoe here in the bottom face the front so my lights are going to poke through this way. The reason I did that is the back will have all the wires sticking out. And if I'm trying, and the, I had the wires coming this way, to put my tent stake in there is going to be hard. Um, it's going to get away. It could damage the pixels. So I'm going to have this face the front. So I'm just going to start adding the pixels here and do it. I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to go every other because I want the output to be on the top. And... And the input and output both on the top and bottom. So I'm going to skip every other one. You can get this set up in X lights with no problem. Um, it's really quite easy. You just tell it to alternate. So I just, as you can see here, I have this as well to push it all the way through. Next one, it's only 14 of them, so it shouldn't take too long. Let's go, let's 
skip every other one till you can no longer do it, and then you circle back. All right. That's in position now. The very end one you can't skip now, so you just go push it in here. Now you skip every other one going back down. And there we go. Load it up, 14 pixels. Input, output. Okay, so installation of the candy canes in the ground are really quite simple. Take one of the tent stakes, put it in the hole, set it in the ground, and drive it in with your hammer. Nice and easy. For the second one, I'm gonna take the output, connect it to the input, and this will give me a nice consistent spacing. When I get these connected up, there's uh, two seven inch pigtails on here. Gives me, I leave a little bit of slack. Put the stake in the ground. I can push a lot of it in with the ground. The ground's pretty soft right now because it got water today. And there we go, two of them are installed. You just repeat that for as many as you have. So here's a test pattern in the day of my candy cane forest. You see the red and the white, I think this will look great. Now to turn it on for a test pattern and see how it looks. Well, I had the candy cane forest set up with a test pattern. It's a little dusk, dusk right now, it's not completely dark. It'll look great at night. Um, you see the test pattern going. There's 30 of them. Uh, I'm going to build 120 of them. Well, I actually have them all printed. I just got to get all the lights pushed in them. Um, then I'll be ready to go. So, uh, hope this helps somebody out there. I hope you enjoy it. You guys have a wonderful day.